algebraic and transcendental equations. First, I will explain the concept and then we will go to one method after the other. Okay? Uh, every method has their own strategy. A method means it has some kind of a strategy and that strategy is something which you can always read in theoretical books like maybe Shastri book or any other theoretical books where what is the strategy that they followed. What I will do here is I will synoptize all those strategies and try to explain you the method. So there are three methods basically. Oh, one is called as a bisection method. Bisection method. What we do here is suppose if I have a curve y equal to f of x. If I have a curve y equal to f of x. If f of x has got a root means for a certain value of x, f of x becomes 0. That means y is 0. That means the function, the curve actually crosses x axis. It actually crosses x axis. It crosses x axis means it so happens that suppose this is x equal to a, this is x equal to b. So at x equal to a, f of a is this one which is negative. At x equal to b, f of b is positive. It means that there exists a root between x equal to a and x equal to b because it always has to cross x axis only then positivity becomes negative or negativity becomes positive. Are you getting? So what I will try to do is by using trail and error method for a given function f of x, I will try to find what is a and what is b between which I have a root so that f of a and f of b are of opposite sign. When f of a and f of b are of opposite sign, there always exists at least one root between x equal to a and x equal to b. Let that root be the midpoint. Let that root be the midpoint. Midpoint means bisecting the line joining those two points, x equal to a and x equal to b, bisect, bisection method. Okay? If that is c, suppose, suppose this is c, which is the midpoint, c equal to a plus b by 2, the midpoint. Then I will find what is f of c. f of c. Suppose f of c comes out to be negative, the way I have shown. Then there exists a root between c and b. There exists a root between c and b. Again bisect it. I will get d. Where d is? Where d is c plus b by 2. Again bisection. Bisection. Now I will find what is f of d. If f of d is positive, then there exists a root between c and d, again bisected, e. Like that, I keep moving forward with different, different iterations. Till the time, till the time you get an answer, but the answer may not be an accurate answer. It might always have some kind of error involved. How much error should be there is something which you can decide if question doesn't demand. Or if the question demands, find a root that lies between x equal to 1 and x equal to 2. Find a root that lies between x equal to 1 and x equal to 2. Uh, correct up to 4 decimal places. Correct up to 4 decimal places. Therefore, in all such cases, you have to get an answer accurate up to 4 decimal places. Okay? Uh, how do you know it is accurate up to 4 decimal places? For example, 1.2345678.9 is the final answer, suppose, assuming that, okay, assuming that this is a perfect final answer, okay. Now there exists a root between 1 and 2, okay, so 1 and 2 means you would have divided, bisected, so 1.5. So obviously it means that there exists a root between 1 and 1.5, again bisection, 1.25. Are you getting? So somewhere you got 1.25. Are you getting? Next again when you bisect, what happens? 1 point. Again 1.2375. One, two, three. 
Now, if you see here, one after the other, after the next iteration, after the next iteration, at the decimal levels, if you see, the two, the first decimal place got repeated. The first decimal place got repeated means that up to one decimal place, you already got accuracy. Up to one decimal place, you already got that accuracy. Next iteration, 1.2356789. Okay, now if you see here, up to two decimal places, two decimal places got repeated, means that at this iteration level, up to two decimal places, you already got accuracy levels. Okay, next level, two, three, four, Vedkanikara. Okay, next level, 1.2345796. So when you compare this and this, up to three decimal places, you already got accuracy levels. Maybe after certain iterations, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, seven. So up to four decimal places, you already got accuracy levels. Actually, you got up to five decimal places, you got accuracy levels, but you don't know whether the fifth decimal place is accurate or not. You will come to know only in the further iterations. Only in the further iterations that you will come to know that even the fifth decimal place we got accuracy level. Understood? Getting that? Okay. So, depending upon the given question, up to four decimal places or up to five decimal places or up to three decimal places, sometimes he will specify that. If he doesn't specify, then you specify in your answer saying that up to four decimal places, this is accurate answer. Getting that? Up to four decimal places, you already got accuracy. You have to specify that. Up to how many decimal places that you are giving accurate, accurate answer. Don't just up to, up to after five, six iterations, you'll stop. Ah, this is the answer. Don't say that. Don't say arbitrarily that after doing some five, six iteration, you feel like you already got exhausted or you don't find time to do further iterations. Don't say that, ah, this is the final answer. Somewhere you have to mention that that is a final answer from your side up to how many decimal places you also have to mention that. Is that clear? Okay. So now in this context you can also look into something like this. Suppose you have to develop a program because all these are iterations. Since they are iterations you can always develop a program. To develop a program you will have a flow chart first and then algorithm and then you develop a program. Sometimes the question can be, uh, 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 draw a flow chart, draw a flow chart to find a root of f of x, some f of x that lies between x equal to 1 and x equal to 2, up to, correct up to four decimal places. If the question is like that, then how would you check that? How would you check that? What we'll do, we'll take the difference between these two. When I take the difference between these two, you'll get at least up to 10 power minus 3. 10 power minus 3, okay? When you got 10 power minus 3 itself means that, that means 0 0.0001, okay? 10 power minus 3 itself means that up to three decimal places you already got accuracy levels. That means, so if x 10th iteration, x 11th iteration, if you see, the di difference between x 11 minus x 10, maybe you can take the modulus of that. You can always take the modulus of that also because it can be reaching this accurate value from the bottom or might be from the top also. You don't exactly from where it is reaching accuracy levels. Okay. So you just take the modulus of that. If this is less than 10 power minus 3, then I already got accuracy level. Suppose the question is up to 5 decimal places, correct up to 5 decimal places, get the accuracy levels. Then you will check whether if this modulus of this, uh, 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 modulus of this value is less than 10 power minus 5, is less than 10 power minus 5, then optimality is reached. The final answer is, if not, again go for iteration. Are you getting? You, will, you are going to have a check mechanism somewhere in between in your algorithm or even in your flowchart also. Getting that? Understood? So somewhere you keep the check. That depends completely on your question. If the question demands to check all these things, you have to check or else you don't require to check. This is called bisection method. Understood? 
it's very very simple method and this is basic basically common sense based bisection method is basically common sense based and very primitive method and to use further other methods like regular falsi method or false position or else newton raphson method those cases we actually try to narrow down between 1 and 2 if you say i will still further narrow it down by using bisection method and then apply newton raphson method or regular falsi method okay so bisection method is always with you next one regular falsi or else called as false position method uh, this is just a theory that i am going i am discussing right now okay suppose i have a curve i have a curve like this okay a curve like this so at x equal to a f of a is negative at x equal to b f of b is positive therefore quite obviously there exists a root that lies between x equal to a and x equal to b quite obviously now what i'll do is i will draw a chord a chord between joining uh, joining this point and this point a comma f of a b comma f of b a comma f of a b comma how do you find that y minus y1 equal to m into x minus x1 gives me the equation of the chord line okay that put y equal to 0 when you put y equal to 0 you'll get a value of x at which this chord crosses x axis this is c again take corresponding point on the curve draw a chord again keeping this as fixed we also call it as false position fixed false position regular falsi method or false position method so we fix this one which we call it as a false position okay and then again draw a chord it cuts the x axis here and again keep going it's an iterative formula basically so if you observe this particular point is slowly approaching the final answer so how many iterations it takes that completely depends upon the interval that you consider here so the suggestion always is take the smallest of the smallest interval that is possible nearby how to get the smallest of the smallest uh, interval use bisection method for that in the rough work use bisection method and then come up to this interval and then apply false position or regular falsi method it is all about chords cutting the x axis and that cutting points keep on approaching the final answer how much accuracy level completely depends upon or uh, how many iterations completely depends upon the accuracy levels that is being asked or that is you put for yourself okay this is regular falsi method and this again the iterative formula also very easy one y minus y1 equal to m into x minus x1 put y equal to 0 you will get new value of x you always get new value of x third one we call it as newton raphson method so it has got its own strategy newton raphson method ఇక్కడ మీరు ఒక క్వశ్చన్ అడగచ్చు కరువు ఇట్లానే ఎందుకు ఉండాలి ఇలా కూడా ఉండొచ్చుగా అవునా అడగండి ఏం కాదు మీరు అడిగితే ఆన్సర్లు చెప్తా ఓకే సపోజ్ ఇట్ కెన్ బి లైక్ దిస్ ఆల్సో వైట్ దిస్ పాయింట్ దిస్ పాయింట్ డ్రా ఎ కార్డ్ డ్రా ఎ కార్డ్ now what happens this point the root lies between these two now now again draw a chord this cuts here again draw a chord now this is false position understood this is false position that is not false position now are you getting things there might be a possibility of having false position here or a false position here also how would you know that 
you will come to know only after first iteration after first iteration see you got see you got c negative b positive f of c negative f of b positive then the curve is like this a a negative c is positive then the curve is like this then this has to be a false position are you getting false position but my suggestion again why to follow two different things you can actually go with one itself okay even if you follow putting this as fixed position finally you will get an answer ink ostund answer answer etla go ostunde but maybe you might require more number of iterations but you will get an answer okay fine anyway let us go for newton raphson method malli karu gesam newton raphson method okay now again at x equal to a f of a is negative at x equal to b f of b is positive what does newton raphson method do is at this point draw a tangent draw a tangent the tangent cuts x axis at a point how to get the equation of the tangent y minus y1 equal to m into x minus x1 what is m f dash of b f dash of b itself is my m are you getting f dash of b so let b be my x not so f dash of x not so y minus y1 equal to f dash of x not into x minus x not y minus y not equal to f dash of x not into x minus x not put y equal to 0 you get a new value of x which is x1 are you getting so this would be my x1 corresponding point on the curve you see again draw a tangent x2 you will get x2 you will get again corresponding point on the curve draw a tangent slowly it comes to actual point are you getting now this is a very faster method this is very very faster method in fact you get answer very very fast here but always remember one thing uh, always there is a question the possibility of asking a question that sir it is like this is okay but it can go like this also somehow somewhere are you getting why it's only like this Thus, see the curve will behave differently at different different levels at different different x values so the suggestion is always is try to get the narrowest interval possible narrowest interval possible okay so that so that the behavior of the curve can be restricted so though it seems to be a huge one this has to be very small interval very small interval so that the behavior of the curve near x axis we restrict it okay somewhere we restrict its behavior it might be either like this or like this that's it okay but if you take a bigger one suppose if i take a bigger one what happens is it goes like this like this suppose somewhere when you cut x axis suppose if it goes like this uh, somewhere if it hits this point maxima point there if you get this take the slope it would be zero slope are you getting sometimes that may also go to infinity also that depends upon the point that means if the curve is behaving differently in the interval that you are talking about then the problem arises so in order to stop that one in order to stop that one we take the narrowest of the narrowest possible interval at least 3 4 iterations you should get for that so within 3 4 iterations the desired accuracy levels you should get that means at least up to one decimal place you should have already started x not at one decimal place are you getting suppose 1.23456 is the answer at least you take this as 1.2 first iteration 1.23 you will get second iteration 1.234 you will get third iteration 1.2345 also you will get so within very very minimal number of iterations you will get proper answer perfect answer provided you have taken very narrowest interval possible if you take the biggest interval then trouble starts for you okay so where the curve goes no one knows because the interval 1 to 2 is a huge interval 
x equal to 1 to x equal to 2 is a very huge interval. It's not small. It's a very huge interval. So try to narrow it down first and then apply your methods.